following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to conduct a performance evaluation of a hybrid cruiser, the Greenline 40 Hybrid. She's powered both by a pair of 220 horsepower Volvo Penta D3 diesels, as well as battery powered E drives. And it's easy to think of these two as separate motors, both with a particular endurance, each needs to be refueled, but one refuels at a marina and the other refuels anywhere. Both burn more fuel the faster you go, and both can also power the vessel's electrical needs. And a simple switch transfers from one to the other. So with that said, let's start by looking at how we manage our power for the E-drives. Here, the center screen shows the batteries are at 97%. It's a sunny day, the air conditioners are all running, all electronics at the helm are powered up. The top line of the outer gauges shows no draw from the E-motor since they're turned off. We can sit like this for 53 hours and 39 minutes, sort of. We can actually maintain this balance for a lot longer. That's more of a gauge than a clock. Now, let's bring the engines to neutral, shut them down, and switch over to the E-motors. Naturally, our fuel consumption drops to zero. Now, as we cruise along at 920 RPM, drawing 53 amps, we show an endurance of 2 hours and 20 minutes. If we back off about 100 RPM, we're running at 4 knots, now using 49 amps, and we can keep that up for 2 hours and 47 minutes. Sit at the dock under the solar panels or start the diesels and the batteries recharge and you have more cruise time. See, we don't go by RPMs, we go by amps being drawn. If you adjust the throttle to keep the draw just under 50 amps, you'll pretty much be at your best cruise between power going in and power going out. Want more? Slow down more. At 600 RPM, we drew 18 amps and the endurance shot up to 6 hours and 56 minutes. While cruising through the marina, we backed off to 400 RPM and we drew only 10 amps. The endurance went up to over 20 hours, still with all the lights burning and air conditioner running. So if you manage your power, you can easily have 20 plus miles range. But the way to use this, say on something like the Intracoastal, is run on the E-motors when you're at no wake speeds and the diesels when cruising. Then the batteries charge back up and you can keep that up for weeks. Cruise under 20 miles and you never need the diesels. And as we cruised along, it was amazing how the water against the hull was the loudest thing we could hear. And no one noticed us as we slipped by. Now, to be clear, this isn't meant to be the sole source of power or to extend your range. It's to supplement the diesel. When running at no wake speeds and you can't load up the engine or when making short runs, Customers who use their green lines for trips to the anchorages or inland cruising never fill up over the course of months. As for performance on the diesels, at 3930 RPM we topped out at 19.2 knots. With her cruising hull, there really is no best cruise. Just set the throttle for how far you want to go. But from 3000 to 3400 RPM, the nautical miles per gallon stays at 1.0 and range between 160 and 168 nautical miles. Naturally, going slower increases that significantly. Now to be fair, I noticed some vibration on one of the engines which made me suspect that during delivery they picked up something in the prop. Plus, previous Greenline models we tested showed a near perfect match between their results and ours. And on this boat they got a top speed of 22 knots, 2-3 to three knots faster throughout the cruise range. And when they hauled the boat the next day, sure enough, there was a pot line around the starboard wheel. So your performance will probably be slightly better than ours. Now when it comes time for docking, there are some pretty cool features at work here. First, the running gear consists of shafts, props, and rudders. It's old school and works really well. She has excellent controllability and she'll walk sideways quite nicely. Here I laid her up doing exactly that and when getting close, just a fine tune with a shot of thrusters was all it took. The other is this opening side door. With this combination, you've got complete controllability and an excellent sight line of the whole starboard side. Additionally, we can now step out the side door and drop a line onto a cleater piling and right back to the midship cleat, making this 40-foot boat easy to tie up when short, or as we see here, single-handed. If backing into a slip, there's a slight blockage with the refrigerator to the starboard side of the galley, but there's a camera at the stern and a reversible one on the antenna mast, either filling that gap and they're viewable on the main screens. Now, let's take a look at some of the operational features, starting with the most significant. The engine room is accessed from two hatches in the main salon, and of course the focal point being the twin Volvo Penta D3 220 horsepower diesel engines. I can see the fuel tanks in the back and the water tanks just in front to both sides, 
and they also have crossovers going from one to the other so you can fill one and the other will level out automatically. The fire suppression system is visible just behind and there's one to each side, but the main point of this is the hybrid installation. Like all the boats in the Green Line lineup, they're available with hybrid options. And it's a very simple system. It consists of nothing more than an E-unit and batteries. Let's start by looking at the batteries, which are down in the guest stateroom. Now the hybrid system is quite simple. If you follow the propeller up, you come to the gearbox, same as on every other boat. That shaft continues ahead through the E-drive or electric motor and then to the diesel. Now we get to switch on whichever one of these two will drive the shaft through the gearbox. And as I said earlier, one draws fuel from the tanks, the other from the batteries. The batteries are recharged from either the diesels or the solar panels on the roof. That's it. Simple. At the front of the salon, there's a door leading to the ship's main electrical panel. DC on the top, AC on the bottom. Down at the bottom are the battery switches for the engines and the house batteries. And this is interesting. The keys are removable. Just ahead is a bit of a navigation station. There's a plastic overlay that we can use for chart storage and a chart table over to the side. And to me, this boat makes an ideal great loop boat because of its low profile. So now if we want to do our navigating, we can do it right here. And then if we want to accompany the captain at the helm, there's a cushion that can go right into this place. And we have a comfortable seat with great vantage point. Taking a look at the helm, it starts with a compass, center mounted. Just below, there's an upper panel, and this gives us all of our information for controlling the hybrid systems. We've got the displays for the E-units and the battery management system. Just below, twin 9-inch Raymarine displays that also have selectable information going from the charts, sonar, cameras. Below, autopilot, the Volvo Penta EVC displays, the digital ignitions, remote control for the spotlight, trim tab controls, the Volvo Penta digital throttle and shift, rocker switches, our systems management display, over on the right hand side windshield wiper control and climate control. Notice the steering wheel, wood with stainless steel spokes and it's mounted to a fixed base. Just to the left we have the Fusion stereo, the VHF, the joysticks for the bow and stern thruster and then the control panel for the inverter and battery charging system. With the inverter control panel, we can control how much of a charge goes into the battery. If they're down low, the charge gets cranked up. If they're charged relatively high, we can bring it on down and just keep them on a trickle charge. We can also switch it over to charger only so that we can control all of the ship's electrical functions on shore power and just use the inverter for the battery charger. Now the Simmarine Systems Management Panel gives us the status of our main battery, our service batteries, the bow and stern thruster batteries, the levels of our water and fuel tanks, and our barometric pressure with a trend for the last three hours. And of course the main feature of every one of the Greenline hybrid models, the switch between the diesel and electric drives. Down below there's a comfortable footrest and take a look at this. We can even flip this panel down so that when we're sitting on this double wide bench seat with the bolster flipped down, it becomes a much more comfortable position. Now, this is a greatly laid out home, but my favorite feature by far has to be this opening side door that gives us easy access to the side deck and the midship cleat. Now, not only do we have ventilation from this opening side door, but there are also two side windows just ahead that give a lot of ventilation. And yeah, they're a little hard to get to, but the benefits are unbelievable. There's convenient storage just across from the helm for quick grab items like binoculars. I would like to see a beverage holder somewhere around the helm though. Overhead is a sunroof that's fitted with blackout shades for both sections, and it opens at the push of a button at the helm. Now, this boat has three 16,000 BTU air conditioning units. That's because it has the tropical air package. Because we have that tropical air package, we also have two 5KW inverters. Those two inverters are located underneath the hatch at the helm, along with one of the three air conditioning units. Now, as I said, we've had one of the 16,000 BTU air conditioners running. If we had the second one going, it probably would be running the batteries down a little bit more. But the point is that this 92% that we're at right now, that speaks to the efficiency of all of the systems on the boat and the efficiency of the six solar panels that are attached to the overhead. They're 300 watts each. So the question could be asked, how much maintenance is there in the solar panels? And the answer to that is just keep them clean. The rest of the system is no maintenance. At the bow, there's a single bollard-style 12-inch cleat with hawse holes to both side bulwarks. The windlass is to port, as is the anchor. There's a hatch to the starboard side leading to the road locker, and a windlass remote is mounted to the underside of the hatch. Above is an opening bow reel for bow and docking. 
Now, let's touch on the power aspect once again before we leave. So now we have the fuel burn for diesel engines. We know how much power we're gonna be drawing on the electric. We're gonna be saving fuel, but it's not about just saving fuel. It's about the convenience, and that is on multiple levels. Let's go over some of them. First of all, operating at idle speed. Diesel engines do not want to be idling constantly. They need to be running. They need to have a load put on them. Anything other than that, it's kind of torturous to a diesel. That's the time to shut the diesel off, switch over to the electric, maneuver around the mooring field, the marina, down the intercoastal waterway. That's one benefit. Now let's get back to the mooring area. Let's say you tie up at a mooring ball. You don't have to have shore power. You don't have to shut your refrigerator off, your air conditioning, the lights, because all of that is being drawn from the batteries that is continually getting charged from the solar panels. Now, more importantly, when you're on that mooring ball, you're not running a generator to keep all of these systems active, and you're not smelling diesel fumes, gasoline fumes, whichever generator you may have. You're running silent, and all of these systems are still working. Now, all this ties together because this is such a functional cruising boat. When you go to a different port, different marina that you haven't been to before, you don't have to worry about the shore power, the dirty power, clean power, any power at all, and how much it's gonna cost you because you don't need it. More often than not, these boats are sold without even including a shore power cord. So in my opinion, we've got an excellent cruising boat. The hybrid system is an option, and if you choose that option, you've got 14 kilowatts going into the batteries. If you don't choose that option, you can get a generator that'll give you five kilowatts of charging going into the system. And if you don't want the generator, You've still got the solar panels on the roof that are putting a charge into the system. So it all comes together on the Green Line 40. And that's my full test and performance evaluation. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.